Beloved, we've been looking at Jacob and the law of increase at this resurrection season, and it's really appropriate to talk about increase at resurrection season because resurrection is the beginning of new creation. It's not just new creation in us, it's the beginning of the new heavens and the new earth awaiting the consummation when we all receive our resurrected bodies and the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. But everything about the kingdom is increase. And so Jacob becomes a perfect paradigm in this season of challenge in this season of change to look at how increase comes by faith the labor of faith in particular in the light of Jacob's walk and desire and intention and how they work together in the labor of faith and I've touched on this already but I want to really key in on something in Genesis 30 from verses 37 and following and then look at something from Genesis 31 so go with me to Genesis 30 starting at verse 37 where the scripture tells us that Jacob took fresh rods of poplar and almond and plane trees and peeled white stripes in them, exposing the white which was in the rods. Set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flocks in gutters, even in watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. And they mated when they came to drink. And verse 39 says, so the flocks mated by the rods and the flocks brought forth striped, speckled and spotted and and Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the striped and all the black in the flock of Laban. And he put his own herds apart and did not put them with Laban's flock. Moreover, when the stronger of the flock were mating, Jacob would place the rods in the side of the flock in the gutters so that they might mate by the rods. But when the flock was feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger were Jacob's. So the man became exceedingly exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Now let me just explain something to you. That word exceedingly implies increase and it's a fulfillment of what God promised Jacob in Genesis 28 in the dream where he saw the ladder which we know ultimately Jesus said he's the ladder where the angels ascend and descend and reconnect heaven and earth so that there can be a company of people that operate in the realms of God's glorious kingdom where increase is the first law. And so Jacob is promised increase when he has that dream and now 21 years later he is going to see God turn the tide of all the oppression and deception of Laban where Laban changed his wages ten times in the negative direction and yet Jacob walked in integrity through the whole thing and God was going to give Jacob a strategy to plunder Laban's house now why is that important for you and I because we live in a day where we are facing major challenges in our culture and there is a whole lot going on that's related to greed and corruption and it's affecting people at a level of our economics and at a level of our well-being. Now you have to ask yourself and I have to ask myself, do we believe that God is up to something good? Our theological framework will determine the outcomes we get. If we don't believe we are the covenant children of God, we won't know how before God to act in a way that enables us to increase regardless of what's going on in the circumstances around us. Now, I've already shared in this series on learning how to say goodbye to Laban. I want to show you how Jacob plunders Laban by the blessing of God so that you can apply those truths and those laws of the Spirit in your life to begin to operate at a level of prosperity in every area of your life. And I'm, when I talk about prosperity, I, I share with some of the great theologians on the planet that believe prosperity is when you have enough to do what you're called to do. It's not about greed. It's not about consuming everything everything you can, naming it and claiming it. That's not the Bible concept of prosperity where you, you just end up having, you, you become gluttonously rich and, and you have no needs whatsoever. You will always have to walk in faith. 
You will always have to walk in a way where you have to trust and depend on God. But God has promised to be your provision, so there will be more than enough, and you will have an abundance in every situation. That's Bible prosperity, and that's God's heart and desire for you. God wants you to prosper. You are the sons and daughters of Abraham, and like Jacob of old, if you will learn how to apply the truths from Jacob and his understanding of of how to cooperate with God, the God that did it for Jacob will do it for you. Now, when you get to this point where God is about to turn things in favor of Jacob, Jacob all of a sudden has this idea, I'm going to take the rods of three different trees and I'm going to expose the white in all the rods. Now, at one hand, if you understand the Hebrew here, there's a pun intended because Laban, is, it, it, Laban if you were to give him a nickname, would be like Whitey. And, um, you know, I, when I grew up, one of my favorite heroes in baseball was Whitey Ford. And so Laban would be like a modern name, Whitey. But, but in exposing the white, what's really happening on the one hand is God is letting Jacob know through this strategy that he's going to expose Laban's trickery. He's exposing Laban, Whitey, and, and, and going to plunder the flocks, and they're going to change masters. But at the same time, he's taking solid colored rods and exposing the white because the, the, the lambs and the flocks and, and the herds that he's taking care of are not speckled and spotted. They're black or white. These are the predominant colors of sheep, black or white. As a matter of fact, if you had speckled and spotted sheep, the speckled and spotted sheep weren't worth as much as the black and the white because the black and the white were dominant. And whichever ones are dominant are worth more in the market. Whichever ones are dominant are worth more in the market. Now, here's how God chooses the weak things to confound the wise. Because God is about to take the rare thing and make it precious. And you need to know there are things that others may devalue in your life that God is saying, because you're in covenant with me, I'm going to take those things that other people think are devalued and have no worth, and I'm going to show you how to increase them so that you end up walking in a level of prosperity because of the rarity of what I've put in you that's uniquely tied to you so that you can begin to see and operate in the blessing of my kingdom so that others would have to take a step back and in humility say, we judged you prematurely. And for many of you, I am persuaded in this season, we are coming into a time of increase by faith in the Spirit. We are coming to see a new realm of resurrection life being made manifest in the saints. I'm talking about a real God who's up to really good stuff for people that have been prevailing in prayer and waiting for a breakthrough, and not just a breakthrough, but in this case, Genesis 28, when God says, We're Wherever your foot turns, I'm going to give you explosive breakthroughs, breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. So the story is that Jacob takes these rods, and by the way, we've already covered this, the rods represent the Word of God. And rods, plural, imply the many functions of the Word of God in your life. He takes these rods, he exposes the white, so that now these three rods, and by the way, it's three, because three is always a number of the completion of things in heaven. Father, Son, and Spirit. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. And the one Lord is Father, Son, and and spirit. The Godhead, the Trinity, works together to move on your behalf, and that cord of three strands cannot be broken. And you want to understand that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are intimately involved in the word that you get in your life. You don't live by bread alone. You live by a proceeding word that goes ahead of you so that you can see the process of God, release the blessing of God, and bring you into a place where you can see the fulfillment of the covenant. When God gives you a word, you have to slow down to the speed of life to hear it. And I want you to hear what I'm saying. When Jacob got the insight on what just I read to you in Genesis 30,
He got it in another dream. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Because there are some theologians that claim that what Jacob did was an act of superstition in his day. And they'll go into all this liberal theology that will tell you this was just a superstitious act. No, this was not a superstitious act. There's nothing in the scripture that's there by accident. There are insights that we can gloss over and overlook and dismiss. But here's what you can never, ever break apart as a cord of three strands. You can never break apart Jesus from the Holy Spirit, from the Word of God. Because the Father has intended, if you want to know Him, you have to know Him by way of His Son, through the Spirit, in the Word of God. And when you diminish the Word of God, you cut yourself off from the flow of the Spirit and the revelation of the Son. You cannot take that cord of three strands apart because Father, Son, and Spirit intended that the Son, the Spirit, and the Word become the way by which you learn how to hear what God is saying to your life. And some of you have not heard in a while. I'm here to tell you, you can detect the mind of God, but you don't get it out of a Cracker Jacks box. You don't get it out of some technique or formula. You've got to set, si set aside time and slow down. Listen carefully. Slow down to the speed of revelation. What am I saying? I'm saying that when Jacob got what he got about this strategy to plunder the flocks of his uncle Laban, who was a deceiver, he slowed down to the speed of sleep. And there was a rest he had to enter into. Many of you are restless right now because you haven't seen your breakthrough. And I'm going to invite you to do even what little Samuel had to do when the word of the Lord came. He got up from the holy place, ran out to Eli, and Eli said, I didn't call you. But Eli gave him the right instructions eventually. When he finally realized God was calling, he said, go back and lie down. Go take a posture of rest. Be weaned away from every other distraction and stay in a place of rest. You remember Elijah? on Mount Horeb when he wanted to die, God had to reacquaint him with his still, small voice. God wants to give you insight, breakthrough insight. God doesn't want you to feel like, God never talks to me. I hear God, I hear people say God talks to them, but I've never heard God. I'm here to tell you, you can detect the mind of God. We have access to the mind of Christ by the Holy Spirit, but you've got to slow down to the speed of revelation and clear out the clutter of every noisy distraction of the culture, of your busy schedule and of all the things that get in the way of you not setting aside time to come to the quiet and open the book and listen, prayerfully listen as you meditate on the scripture. You've got to make that time. I know this isn't deep. I know this isn't new. I know this is basic stuff. But beloved, it's the basics that make for champions. If you want to operate in the power of God, Thomas Whitfield said it best, we need a word from the Lord. We don't need another militant uprising. We don't need another conqueror on the scene. But what we need is a simple word that will burn within our hearts and give us direction from above. There's a Sabbath rest. And here's when, when, when God turns the tide on Jacob's behalf and black and white sheep mate and they now become speckled and spotted and his flocks become stronger. It's because Jacob has been given a revelation when he slowed down to the speed of revelation. In Genesis 31, 10, Jacob says to Rachel, this is after the fact, and it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks were streaked speckled and gray spotted. Notice the rams which leaped upon the flocks. There is no mention in the story in Genesis 30 of rams being involved. Why in the dream is the symbol of a male ram leaping on the flocks and changing their DNA, changing their color? Because Christ is the ram caught in the thicket, and the ram was symbolic of Christ as the Lord of the new creation, bringing the flocks of God under a 
a new master who loves them and wants to bless them and wants to increase them. But in the dream, he sees rams leaping upon the flocks that are streaked, speckled, and spotted. Here's what I want you to understand about Christ. Christ is your savior for every season. He doesn't come across one way and another way and another way when he will be what you need him to be when you need him to be it. He is multicolored. He is the coat of many colors that was on Joseph. He is from every tribe, every race, every kindred, every tongue. And in the dream, when Jacob sees this, the angel of God himself speaks to Jacob in the dream and says, Jacob, and Jacob says, I'm here. In other words, when, ja when God calls and Jacob says, I'm here, can I tell you what that means for you? It means when God calls, you need to be fully present to the moment, fully present to what's happening in the moment, because you're fully present to God. You can't say, here I am, when you're distracted. There are many times God is calling, but we are so distracted, we can't say, I'm present. You know, Rabbi Daniel Lappin is a dear friend, and many of you know Rabbi Lappin, but I said to Rabbi Lappin one night, and I said, Rabbi, why are Christians in America, around the world in the West, having such a hard time hearing from God? And Rabbi said, if they would fast from all their distractions for six months, they would start recognizing the still small voice of God that even as Elijah recognized it. And this, beloved, was such a thunderous revelation to me that he said we live in a culture of distraction. Jacob heard the call of God, and when God called Jacob, Jacob said, I'm here. And it's from the I'm here that the Lord says, lift up your eyes. In other words, until you lift your vision higher, you won't see what God's doing. You've got to lift it beyond the sense world. You've got to lift it beyond the things that are in front of you. You may be looking at the fact that you can't multiply into that great increase with what you have. But you've got to lift your vision higher to what God says is possible by a higher law, by the law of faith. Jacob, lift up your eyes and see. Until you lift your eyes up, your redemption won't draw near to you because you, God will not speak to you at the frequency of the natural. God speaks on the frequency of the light of the Spirit. And he says, lift your eyes and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray-spotted, for I have seen all that Laban is doing to you, and I am the God of Bethel. The God of the, the, the place, the ladder, the ascending, the descending, the place of connection, the gateway, the portal to all the invisible supply of the kingdom, invisible lines of supply. I'm the God of Bethel where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow. Jacob labored out of this sense of faith and desire. And when he took the strategy God gave him, and he allowed the sheep to look at the different rods. And where were the rods? They were in watering troughs, a type of the river of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 46, there is a river. The streams thereof make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved, and he will help her, and that right early, it says in the King James. He put those rods, those aspects of the function of the Word of God in the watering troughs. You need to understand that you are to worship God in spirit, and in truth. You don't just need the Word. You need the Holy Spirit to illumine that Word and show you what you haven't seen. David says, open my eyes that I might behold wonderful things out of thy law. You never want to read the book as if it's a newspaper. 
It is a living document. It is the living, breathing word of God, breathed by the Holy Spirit through all sorts of different authors over thousands of years that amazingly, not knowing each other, all tell the same story because it's all coming from the God who is light himself and who is the light of every person coming into the world. Jacob operated in the law of faith. What are the rods of the word of God that God is saying, I want you to lay hold of my promises, put them in the river of the spirit by prayer, and begin to behold them while you are anticipating new life coming forth. Because breeding, listen carefully, breeding is about new life. Have you ever looked in Ephesians 6 at the armor of God? In the armor of God, it says, gird your loins with the belt of truth. Gird your loins. The loins are the seat of reproduction. And what, what Paul is telling us is that we are called to reproduce the truth of the revelations God has given us. God wants to make you abundantly fruitful in this season. There's an anointing right now. I am very aware that God is opening eyes, eyes and hearts and ears at what I'm saying. Faith is coming. And many of you are listening to me right now and your eyes are glued to what I'm saying, not because it's Mark Sharona, but because the Holy Spirit is instructing me and moving in me to encourage you to believe that the good promises of God, the rods of God, are moving in your direction as you are released from distraction so you can lay hold of those promises in the river of the Spirit and by the Word and the Spirit worship the Father and behold with fresh eyes the new things He wants to bring to birth in your life. I declare to you that you are about to open the book in a new way in this season. You are about to overcome many of the distractions that have held you back from hearing and detecting the voice and the mind of God in your life. An increase is coming your way. This is resurrection season. And I prophesy to you that you will walk in the new creation dimension of increase and God doing exceeding abundantly above and beyond all you could ask or think because the spirit of revelation is going to quicken you as you come to the quiet and wait for him to speak. Beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you he's there and he is not silent. Hear what the spirit is saying to you. Why is that important? Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by a word from the living Christ. I pray God's richest blessing on your faculty of hearing and your faculty of seeing in this season when your desire is going to activate the spark of the law of faith and a fresh fire is going to consume those things that are getting in the way of the blessing from touching your life. Laban's reign is coming to an end for your sake. God bless you. Beloved, as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection season, the first fruits of Christ as the new creation, I want to invite you to sow a resurrection seed into Mark Sharona Ministries to enable us to continue to preach the gospel in this hour of challenge and change worldwide. I invite you to sow a resurrection seed right now of $36 or more into the soil of Mark Sharona Ministries. I'll say thank you 
by putting in your hands this powerful brand new series, Jacob and the Law of Increase, where you're going to understand and get to know more about the nature of the labor of faith, the law of faith, the labor of love, the law of use, the law of increase, and how all of that works together with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus to bring you into increased fruitfulness in every area of your life. Sow that love gift right now. Sow that resurrection seed. And let me say thank you by putting this series in your hand, CD or DVD, your choice. If God moves on you to sow a love gift, a resurrection seed of $56 or more, I'm also going to give you a classic series, multiple messages entitled The Promise of Favor. But learning how to work with the synergy of the Holy Spirit is something that will literally ignite your faith at a whole new level for how God takes one and one and makes it three. Synergy is, means that the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. When you labor with God, things exponentially increase in favor. And if you'll sow a love gift right now of $76 or more, you're not only going to get Jacob and the law of increase, you're not only going to get the promise of favor, you're also going to get my powerful series on intentional living that will literally piggyback everything else you're hearing and you'll learn how to live a life by design and not by default. Sow your best resurrection seed now. $36, $56, $76. And let me put these resources that retail for well over $150 into your hands as a way of me saying thank you for partnering with us to share the glorious gospel of Christ with the whole world. So now. I'm so delighted that you've chosen to hang on until this moment. Many of you are just getting introduced to me and to our ministry, and I wanted to give you a special opportunity to feed on something that will enhance your life, add value to your journey, and empower you by the Holy Spirit from the inside out. It's a package that retails for $89 with a book, a best-selling book, an entire series of messages on the book and a learning manual. And it's all based on the seven secrets of unfolding destiny. If you'll right now go to drmarkfree.com, you will get the entire package as my gift to you just for logging on to that website, drmarkfree.com. Do it now.